good morning everybody welcome to Osaka all right we're gonna show you some very cool street art here in Osaka Japan it's a beautiful morning here it is a Wednesday morning it's about 11 a.m. and it's quite warm actually now a little bit cooler this morning let me say good morning very quickly if you're watching on Twitter I cannot read your comments if you want to watch uh, and just watch without commenting that's fine but if you'd like me to read your comments please come to YouTube Dave and Osak on YouTube and you'll be able to see I'll be able to see your comments so good morning everybody all right we're gonna talk about Osaka street art hey Cheryl how's it going long time no see we're gonna talk about Osaka street art in this amazing project here and I'm gonna go through all of these well not all but most of these pieces here there's there's about 20 pieces and I'm gonna describe each one and I'm gonna talk a little bit about history here so hello Nick hey good morning hey Jonathan how are you good morning if you like street art then you'll like this broadcast so I'm going to talk about that. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good to see you. So I was just doing a broadcast uh, explaining it, and I thought I'd do another one uh, explaining it to everyone here. So this here is the Dotonbori River in Osaka. This is the Dotonbori River. About 20 years ago, Deborah, good morning, how are you? About 20 years ago, this place looked a lot different. This river was pretty messy. I think it is still kind of messy, but looks a heck of a lot better than it does now. Uh, it looks a lot better now than it did then. Hey, Ariel, what's up? Now, well, it, we're, it's pretty early in the morning here, Nick. Uh, and this part of town doesn't really have a lot of traffic. So uh, I thought I'd come here and do this broadcast. So they built this, uh, this walkway here within the past 20 years to kind of improve the image of this neighborhood. Used to be dirty, used to be garbage on the other side uh, of, the, um, of the river, but they beautified it here with this. And they've also, hello Abdullah, good morning. And they've also beautified it with this art here on the other side, which I'm gonna explain. So, let me tell you a little bit about Os Osaka, the history. So the 1990s uh, in Japan and generally was a lost decade. There was the asset price crash in the early 1990s that uh, collapsed the economy of Japan. It really, um, really hurt it pretty badly. And in the beginning of the 20th, 21st century, in the knots, early knots, they they tried to improve the image, especially of Osaka, because Osaka always had a really gritty image, uh, and. They, they did uh, several projects in the north of the city. That's where I live, in the north of the city. They did a lot to try and improve it. And in the south of the city, they did a lot too, to try and beautify it, to bring more people in. One of the things they did was built this uh, walkway on either side of the river. Because the river was also always known as super dirty. Um, people would dive into it uh, when there were baseball games and people would get sick because the water was so polluted. It was really gross. So it really didn't have a, a good image. Pete, good morning, welcome. MJ, welcome. Abdullah, welcome. Paula, hello, I missed your comment. I missed people's comments before because I didn't scroll down, sorry. Okay, good morning, everybody. So they built this to beautify it, and I think it's a great idea. And it really did bring the people, a uh, much cleaner Dotonburi, yeah. It brought the people in, it brought the businesses in, the Venice of Japan, yeah. <laughs> That's a great marketing uh, marketing uh, gimmick that they use, the Venice of Japan. So one of the other things they did to improve this area was add these street art pieces here. Now, street art and graffiti or any sort of art like this in general had a bad impression. I think it has a sort of a bad image in Japan. I'm sure you guys know from watching the broadcasts how Japan looks very clean. It is very clean. So something like street art has a kind of a negative, um, a negative image to people in Japan. 
because it's kind of dirty. It looks, you know, they think of graffiti, they think of dirtiness. Uh, Japanese people are quite clean. Cleanliness is very important to them. So any sort of street art or graffiti like that, it uh, has kind of a negative image. They do, okay, good. Now that's one thing, Ariel, is I've always been envious about other cities and countries around the world that they have this amazing street art, but Japan never did. None of the places in Japan never did. But this company that started in 2020 was called Wallshare. What they did was they brought property owners, they brought clients, and they brought artists together to display this street art and maybe make it a little bit more acceptable for Japanese people to, to see it. So it's a great idea. And they've done projects in other parts of the city and it's done really well. Uh, I didn't broadcast from those other parts of the city because it just didn't make sense. They're kind of scattered everywhere. This is the only place that's gathered. Uh, it's all gathered together. It's much easier to show. But in some of the other parts of the city, in, in my neighborhood too, they have some, uh, what they do is they rent the wall. So the company will rent the wall from another company. They'll pair their artist with that building. And then the people will paint, uh, you know, they'll do the art piece on the wall. So it's a great idea. Uh, great idea and a great way to kind of break in uh, Japanese people to uh, street art and maybe make them think less that it's a, a negative thing. So most of the pieces here, they're all gathered together. There's about 20 of them. And there's some pretty big names here. There's some pretty big names with big clients. It depends on the spot they change up. That's See, I envy that. Um, here we don't have so much, but it's coming very slowly. And I've seen a lot of videos uh, of street art in other places, and it, they're way ahead of us, but hopefully we'll catch up because there's a lot of great street artists in Japan with, uh, with, a, with some pretty big clients, and they have quite a history. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna explain some of these pieces, and um, yeah, we're gonna check them out. I've shown it before, but I haven't gone into too much of a detail. So I'm, I got a lot more information about each of these guys, and I think that uh, you'll you'll like the information, uh, especially the stories behind uh, some of them. They're quite cool. I'm gonna start in the corner here, and I'm gonna start with this one. I think you guys will know this one. I actually didn't know who this guy was until I read his biography, and then I was like, oh wow, I know who he is, and I've seen his work before, and I bet you have too. Okay, let me say this. How many people, how many rap fans, any hip hop fans, any hip hop or rap fans from the 90s specifically, can you recognize this guy's style? If you're a hip hop or a rap fan, I bet you you'll recognize this style. There's a bit of a delay in the comments, I bet. But this guy, um, this guy's, this artist's name is called Cook. His name is Cook. And he has done work most famously for Delicious Vinyl Records. Uh, he's a designer for D Delicious Vinyl Records. Let me go get my 18-year-old son. <laughs> well, this is from the 90s, Nick. So maybe it was, it was our generation. Hey, Japanese Metal, how are you? Thanks for coming in. So, he was a designer for Delicious Vinyl Records. Can you name two or any artists from the... Okay, thank you, Deborah. Thanks, Deborah. Okay, thanks for coming in. All right, two of the artists from Delicious Vinyl Records was Young MC and Tone Loke. I'm sure you guys know Tone Loke. Funky Cold Medina. Everybody knows Funky Cold Medina. That is this guy, Cook. He was the artist for Delicious Vinyl Records. And he's also done uh, murals, of course. Yeah, Young MC, right, exactly. And uh, Tone Loke. <laughs> Nick, Nick, just not gonna happen. Just not gonna happen. Yeah, so uh, he's also done, um, not gonna happen, yeah. He's done a collaboration with uh, Tezuka Productions. You guys also know Astro Boy? 
Well, Astro Boy was created by a guy from Osaka named Osamu Tezuka. Osamu Tezuka is from the north of Osaka. Not Banksy, no. Hey, Bruce Lee, what's up? This is Cook. He's uh, from Delicious Vinyl Records. So uh, he did a huge mural in LA. I don't know if any of you guys are in LA, but it's supposedly in LA, there's a massive mural of Astro Boy. Massive mural of Astro Boy. And this is the guy who did it. Hey, Bruce Lee. Yeah, so he did that mural. Also, I don't know if you guys know the manga Neon Gen Genesis Evangelion. That's from the 90s. Huge and Japanese anime. This guy also did the graffiti art in that movie. So a pretty famous guy uh, in the street art scene with some pretty big clients. Cook. Uh, he also did art for Devil Man. Devil Man is another famous Japanese comic. So. If you got any delicious vinyl records pull them out check it out i bet you you'll notice the art is similar it's because it's the exact same guy cook i know you're singing right now nick nick you're singing bust a move right now i can just imagine ariel thank you for hosting i appreciate it all right this one here i have no information for uh but it looks like three four monsters with uh Fruit monsters with teeth. I have no idea what's going on there. Hello, Ruth. Thank you. Yeah, no info on that. Sorry. I do. <laughs> I could hear it. I can just imagine. All right, this one here is kind of cute. This one here. Uh, this is an artist, uh, Mizurio. Mizurio is uh, he's from Okayama, but he's in Osaka now. He lives in Osaka. He's a uh, a Brazilian soccer fan when he was a kid so when he was when he was a kid he went to Brazil to actually see a soccer game live and while he was there he noticed all the graffiti uh, in Sao Paulo and he fell in love with graffiti uh, as an art and when he grew up he wanted this is the quote he uses he wanted to express his Japanese-ness through graffiti art after having been influenced by it uh, and seeing it in Brazil so you can definitely see the Japanese-ness here. In this picture here, you can see the girls are saying something, They're saying Naniwa. Naniwa is the ancient name uh, of Osaka. This area used to be known as Naniwa. So he's putting a little bit of Osaka culture in there too, which is kind of cool. Mizurio. Hello, Edie. Thank, thank you for coming in. Thank you. Ario, thanks so much. Uh, Lito, thank you for coming in too, man. Thanks for watching. Lito is another scoper from, uh, I should say, broadcaster on YouTube. He's also in Osaka. If you want to see some more broadcasts from Osaka, watch Lito in Japan. Uh, he's another foreigner living here. He's been here almost the same time as I am, actually. About 20 years. I think you've been here that long. So if you want to see some more broadcasts from Osaka, please check out Lito. They're mo they do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She's saying Naniwa. Exactly. Larry, thanks for coming in, man. Appreciate it. Hello, Mash Code. Thank you. Hi. Uh, I'm, I wonder what you're saying there, MJ. I can't read. Something about small dragon. <laughs> That's all I know. Okay, this one is cool. I like this one. This is Viva La Mort. Viva La Mort. His name is Viva La Mort. Uh, he was born in Reno. No problem. Yeah, anytime, man, for sure. Born in Reno, raised in Seattle. One of his clients was, ironically enough, Corona Beer. So he's done uh, work with some very big clients. Okay, Bruce Lee. <laughs> All right, that explains it. Now, this style is kind of cool. I like this picture because it kind of uh, blends the ancient Japan with modern Japan. If you see his hairstyle, that, that kind of hairstyle is called chomage. You saw the samurai used to wear or even the aristocrats in the past, they used to wear their hair like that with the shaved top and the, uh, excuse me, I was gonna sneeze there. Shaved top and the longer sides and the kind of ponytail thing at the back. And he's got the hip hop, hip -hop clothes on. There is no MoMA Museum, no, no. We do have a lot of products, like a MoMA Museum products that they sell in stores. 
Uh, but we don't have a MoMA museum here, no. We have modern art museums, but not uh, nothing affiliated with MoMA, so. Okay, yeah, so that's a cool one. I like that one. Viva la Mort. Definitely Osaka style. I love it. Love the hair. Chomage. Maybe we can bring it back. It would be a cool hairstyle. Balding on the top already myself, so hey, I'm halfway there. All right, this one here is a cool one. Uh, this is uh, this is a female. This is the only female actually here. Calligrapher Mommy. Her name is Calligrapher Mommy. So she's been doing Japanese calligraphy since she was uh, nine years old. She's done work with the uh, Rugby World Cup. So we hosted the rugby. Yeah, uh, not like sumo, but similar to that, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> All right, a little delay in the comments there. So, uh, Rugby World Cup was in 2019. Hey, Fame Dining, thanks for coming in. Rugby World Cup was in 2019, and she did work for them. Hello, Matthew, thanks for coming in. And you can see this style here. It fuses graffiti with calligraphy. Uh, you can definitely see the. there are Japanese characters. It is in the Shodo style. Japanese calligrapher, calligraphy is Shodo. So... Um, but it also has that kind of uh, grittiness and roughness of graffiti. So those elements together kind of reflect her style, calligrapher mommy. When she does this, it's like a performance. This is probably done in a very short time. You can see from the strokes that they're done, uh, you know, it's done quite quickly and smoothly. So um, I love the style. And what it says is, it says Do Tombori, which is the name of this area. Do Tombori. That's the name of the area. So I love this. Uh, this is a great one. Calligraphy Mommy, fantastic. The way she blends those two styles of graffiti and of uh, Japanese calligraphy together. Hello, Chris M. Vlogs. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Uh, good to see everybody again. I've been kind of uh, AWOL. Uh, didn't know what to broadcast. I've been lost. So I thought I'd broadcast this one. I did a lot of research for it. Um, so I thought I'd uh, come on and say hello. <laughs> this one, there's no info for it, but uh, yeah, kind of cute. Uh, it does not look like, yeah, it has nothing written about it. Mixing calligraphy and steer. It is, yeah, I love that. I love that one. Uh, and that's the only female artist, unfortunately, but it's quite cool. So, California boy, hello. I'm sure you guys have some amazing street art where you are, um, California boy. Okay, this one here is, I like this one, kind of, it looks like kind of like a child's art, but it actually is a, kind of sick and tight. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, maybe they are. Yeah, you're right. This one here is uh, Hayat, Hatayama Masao. Uh, from Osaka, Japan, another gentleman from Osaka. Uh, his works have been shown in the Louvre Museum and he will have works exhibited at Osaka Expo in 2025. So we are gonna host the Osaka Expo in 2025 and uh, this gentleman is supposedly gonna have an exhibition there. So it's showing you here, it's showing you the, the river right here, um, the Dotombori Walk, which is where, the Tombori Walk, which is where we are. And you can see in the river, there's takoyaki. Takoyaki is the uh, signature food of Osaka. Uh, batter with pieces of octopus inside of it. So I love that one. It looks like some animals are watching there. Got a pig, uh, a cat. Yeah, I love that one definitely captures the spirit of Osaka and kind of playful too um, with the way he made it uh, kind of like a, ch a child would have painted it very cool all right this one here is uh, Olfa I don't know what this is I believe it's the artist name doesn't have any information about it but uh, pretty cool very folk art yes yeah we would swim a river with takoyaki. <laughs> yeah, I like that one there. 
And then this one over here, also I don't have any information on it, but very abstract. Uh, I like this one. It has a signature there, but I can't read it. I'm not quite sure what it says. Thanks for hosting California Boy, appreciate it. Thanks man, appreciate it. Okay, the next one is quite interesting. Uh, this is a pair of artists together. They're called Whole Nine. Okay, Whole Nine is a team of two people from Osaka. And they're also active outside of Japan. Uh, they prefer live painting. So they do live, paint, live uh, painting when they do these pieces. Uh, there's two of them. Their names are Hitch and Simo. Now how they work together is this. Hitch is the person that draws uh, more uh, concrete objects. So like people, you see the man's face in this picture, the, the leaves and the, looks like little fruits. I don't know what they are, um, but he is the one who paints those. And then Simo is the artist who paints the abstract parts of this. Okay, Nick, yeah, no worries, man. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm late anyway, so. Keep on working on that tone look. Take care. Bye for now. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, so um, the abstract parts are by the art, artist Simo. Um, so together they make this really cool um, collaboration of these uh, abstract parts and these uh, concrete motifs together. Very cool. Exacto Knife Company. Really? Okay. Does it have any exacto knife? No, there's a, just a dude spray paint in there. So I love this one. Very cool one, very trippy. I like it. Whole nine. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if it is Olfa. It does not suggest it at all um, that it is a, uh, a exacto knife company. Okay, this guy is very famous. This is a huge artist very very famous guy in the street art scene uh, this is TT freak okay TT freak he has done work with Disney and Marvel comics so he's you know he's got some pretty big clients and he began his career by doing illustrations for MTV Brazil his work has been shown in galleries around the world and he's done um, work for Facebook Facebook uh, headquarters in Brazil and he's also done art for the World Cup in Germany when it was held there I think that was in the middle of the 2010s I think that's when it was. I can't even remember when it was freak one looks yeah this one's cool yeah this guy's a pretty big name it does look kind of 3d pretty simple one um, okay cool thanks man thanks I like that one. Yeah, TT Freak. T I T I Freak. Very cool one. Oh, Freak One. I wonder why it says Freak One. Uh, his name is TT Freak. I'm not sure why he writes Freak One on it. But that's a cool one. I love the colors on that too. By the fish. Yeah, <laughs> that guy's kind of trippy. I'm not sure what he's doing there. Staring at a fish through the window there. I don't know. That looks like a fence, a stencil of a fence or something too. Kind of cool. So we're down here at the Dotonbori River. Let me show you where we are. Um, they've kind of beautified this area with this uh, walkway on either side. And they've got the street art um, posted on the walls. And it's a great idea. It's a company that's doing this called Wallshare. Uh, Wallshare brings artists it brings uh, clients and property owners together and they're uh, using art as a uh, form of advertising too. Some of the clients I've seen like uh, energy drinks, uh, they've done a couple of murals with these artists named, these specific artists too have done uh, some advertising uh, throughout the city. There's other parts of the city that have a lot of street art in it too. I didn't show you because they're kind of scattered everywhere. This is the only place where they're all gathered together, but these are, uh, this would be easy, the easiest to broadcast, so I thought I'd come down here. But the other parts of the city really need it. Some of them are pretty rough places. Uh, 
uh, and people are visiting and you know taking photos of it and it's uh, you know beautifying the neighborhood brings more people people feel more comfortable there brings more business and it's just uh, overall better uh, for the neighborhood so it's a great idea great concept we have some kitties here some stray cats let's see what they're doing hi guys I just saw them being fed actually some gentleman here was feeding them so. okay this one here uh, I don't know about the artist but there's so many different uh, motifs about Osaka uh, there's the the Tower of the Sun this is from Expo I think it was 72 I believe it was we when Osaka hosted the Expo um, to Tenkaku the tower right here Osaka Castle we have the Osaka Aquarium uh, Bilikan he is uh, I believe it's like a demigod that if you rub his feet it's good luck you see that in a lot of different places in Osaka and oh yeah this is a, a fugu restaurant now closed down uh, like a poisonous blowfish restaurant hey Artie Cat how are you thanks for coming in yeah, that is a huge cat, right? Maine Coon. It does look like a Maine Coon. So this one is uh, Osaka, Osaka Mural. All right, this one I love. This is Cab. His name is Cab. Uh, he was influenced by American comics. He is from Osaka, and he does uh, domestic and international work. Billiken originally from, did it? Is he really? Did not know that. Did not know that. There you go. Learned something new. Okay, this here, uh, you can see, uh, no problem, thanks for coming in. You can see he's, uh, or I believe it's a he or she, holding takoyaki there. Again, the famous food from Osaka. And yeah, again, that gentleman's name is Cab. Cab. Very cool one. All right, this one here is one, my favorite. I love this one. This is by, uh, this guy's really famous. Uh, he has a, a couple of other pieces throughout the city. There's one in Kobe, Takoyaki and a Samurai and a Mad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Definitely have to like that one. This is Yohei. Uh, if you look up Yohei, you'll see a lot of his other pieces. A lot of his other pieces are really beautiful, all similar to this style. So he uses a lot of females in his pieces, and the females he uses are to symbolize life. He was influenced by skate culture, skateboarding culture, and uses many colors in his art to reflect the variety of life. Uh, and he also paints flaws in his pictures, intentionally paints flaws to show through time uh, Sorry. He expresses the flaws shown through time by painting, painting flaws in his art. That's what I meant. Yohei is this. Let me see if I can type it for you. No, I can't. Sorry, Ariel. I can't type it. Y-O-H-E-Y-Y. -E -Y -Y. It's two Y's. It's kind of strange. You can see his name right there. Y-O-H-E-Y-Y. -Y. See, so let me rephrase that again. He paints flaws in the art to show the same kind of flaws um, that happen naturally through time. So I guess it's to make it more realistic. They're huge, yeah, they're, they're big pieces. And I love this one. The detail is amazing too. And let me show you this. This is a particularly cool um, parts of his paintings. The detail of it. So he's got a he's got a lot of stencils in there. I love those stencils. The different colored stencils there. And uh, look at the detail. Even even if you go close up, you can still appreciate the detail of it. That's beautiful. The blending is amazing. And even the goldfish uh, looks super real. If you get close up. The stencils are really cool. I love those stencils. That's a beautiful piece. 
And this, yeah, there's his name there, Yohei. Y-O-H-E-Y-Y. -Y. That's awesome. Jasper, jo oh, does he really? I didn't know that. And this is a little, uh, this is a cool thing too. It looks to me like this might be uh, in the foundation of it. Like he puts the base paint on it and then he paints over it. I believe that's what this is. And you can kind of see under it, <laughs> those two details. It looks like an ornament in her hair and maybe uh, an earring. And I love that little touch there. That's beautiful. That is a piece of art. Love that. Fantastic. Okay, this one here is next to Yohei is Grind Pencil. Grind Pencil. And I don't know much about this guy. All I know is he's from Osaka. And he has some other pieces throughout the rest of the city. Uh, you know, good question. I really don't know. But I do know that they do this live. There was one near my house that they did. What they do is, uh, it's not done in one day. The one near my house, what they do is the, there's the foundation layer. They have to wait for that to dry. And then they add layers on top of it. So it's it's many days. Uh, it doesn't. It's not all done in one day. So it really depends on the complexity of it. The more layers it has, the more days it takes. Uh, something like that, like the Yohei one, man, I don't know. But that looks like a lot of layers there. It probably takes them uh, quite a while to do it because you got to wait for the base layers to dry. So. Okay, grind pencil. Yeah, that's all I know about this one. This one's pretty simple, uh, but it's a cool one. Not much of a story behind this too. So. Okay, this one here is any manzai? No, there isn't. There isn't actually. But they are kind of uh, humorous, some of them though. This one here is, <clears throat> this is called Baki Baki. So I believe this pattern is called a Baki pattern. It's based on an ancient Japanese pattern. Someone in another broadcast mentioned that it looks like origami. It definitely does look like origami. Uh, and it, what it is, is he's fusing Japanese traditional art and street, street culture together. And yeah, definitely, I think it does that. Uh, you can see it kind of has that gritty aspect to it, but also um, kind of looks like origami too. So there's an elegant aspect to it too. Colors are really cool too, the gold. And you can see the repeating pattern there in different sizes. That's a smaller one, larger one, and there's a larger pattern of it. So all those, the sizes, he uses the sizes for variations too, which is quite cool. Okay, we can get closer to that flag. There's a little bit in there too, yeah. Is the brown, uh, is the brown fence over that says, part of the display? No, no, it's not. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> I like the Daruma feel of this. I, I'm, thanks, for, hey Scott, thanks for coming. How did I miss these questions? You know, I missed some questions earlier and I don't know how I did, but anyways, sorry. Anyways, I like that one. It's cool. Okay, let's go to the other side. And we're gonna look at the other ones. I gotta cross the bridge. Thanks for coming in everybody. Good to see everybody. I gotta go to the other side to show you the other four. More of a common, thanks for, oh, okay, all right. All right, there's four more. Give you a shot of the uh, the river. There's the Dotonbori River. And the uh, promenade there. It's always on display, yes. Um, they're, they're actual panels. They can be removed very easily. Uh, someone in another broadcast had a good question. What do they do with the artwork on the walls 
I was saying before that this, this was arranged by a company called Wallshare and they pair artists with clients and they rent the walls of the properties and someone asks uh, what happens to that wall um, you know when it's torn if they're gonna tear it down or do they ever get rid of it because they pay rent for the walls they rent the walls what happens when you stop paying rent and I don't know <laughs> I don't know hey Benny how's it going thanks for coming in I really don't know that's a good question because these here are removable they're very easily removable but the ones uh, on the wall are not so uh, I'm curious to see what happens to those all right thanks for coming in Benny it's been a while thanks for coming in well it's maybe yeah but it's part of the wall that's the thing, Bruce Lee, it's part of the wall. So I don't know how would they, how would they do? See, okay, I'll show you these. These ones here are just easily taken off. It's just like a piece of metal uh, that's that's screwed in. So you can easily, easily take those off and put them anywhere, you know, you could sell these. But those ones on the wall, I don't know. This one is just straight up Osaka. It does not say who the artist is. And it's got a couple of Osaka landmarks. They've got the Tsutenkaku Tower there, and it's got Osaka Castle. So that's a great, uh, great mural for Osaka, and it's kind of in a graffiti street art writing. Good to see it. Too. Yeah, I've been kind of a wall, um, but uh, here I am. <laughs> I'm gonna try and broadcast the next few days. Show you some more cool stuff. This one here is does not give any information. It's just a mix of all different uh, graffiti styles. It looks like different fonts, uh, different colors, but quite cool. This one here also no information about it. But kind of cool. Oh, Maido. Maido is like, thank you, uh, in Osaka. And don't see what else it says there. Someone drinking a beer with chopsticks. Definitely Osaka style. This one here I love too. This is very abstract. Looks like it's uh, Sanskrit. So, hello. I like street graffiti, but way cooler. It's like, oh yeah, well, yeah, these are pretty professional artists. I talked about it in the uh, broadcast earlier. I love this one. Uh, looks like it looks like Sanskrit. Uh, pretty simple. Just a couple of colors, some shades of blue there. But it looks like Sanskrit. Anybody read Sanskrit? What does it say? That looks like Sanskrit right there. To me. Hey, thanks. No problem, Bruce Lee. No problem. And then the last one is this one. Uh, doesn't have any, inform any information on this too. So. Yeah, this whole wall here, they, didn't, they did not post any information about it, so. But pretty cool. So I hope they're gonna add to this. Uh, it's a great idea, great for the city. Uh, it looks like there's a whole bunch of other panels down here that are empty and definitely a great spot for some more street art. So I hope uh, that wall share company finds more artists that are willing to show their pieces uh, down here. It's a great spot to do it. And I think that um, there'll definitely be more people coming down here um, as things open up. So yeah, it's cool. And you know, I, I was saying before that, um, where am I? All artists tag their name. Or, didn't write it all the side. All artists tag their name in the art if they didn't write it off. Oh, okay. Well, you probably know better than me. I, I, I don't. I couldn't see any names. Uh, they didn't post any info. I couldn't find anything on the websites about those. But 
Yeah, it's good to see Japan embracing this. I've seen so many cities throughout the world uh, embracing street art and showing it um, uh, on their buildings. And it's a shame because there's so many great artists in Osaka, but they have nowhere to, to show it. So uh, thank, thankfully this company uh, had this idea of bringing these artists and clients and uh, property owners together to display art in a more acceptable way to uh, Japanese society because it is kind of maybe a little bit more frowned upon than uh, other places. So, uh, you know, so once in a while, I have a couple of drinks, you know, maybe uh, pull out the spray can, Bruce Lee, things happen. I'm not giving any more details than that, but uh, you know, it happens. So I can imagine that is the Mecca. Uh, well, I guess maybe New York City is the Mecca of it, but I would love to, uh, love to see what you guys got. Uh, go down there and check it out so there we go i'm gonna leave on that shot there <laughs> the, the the state of emergency was lifted on monday the state of emergency was lifted on monday since january 27th it's been insane man it's been so long <laughs> yeah so yeah cool hey alan's what's up man thanks for coming in all right, on that note, I'm going to leave. So thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming in. Hope you enjoyed that little uh, graffiti tour. And uh, I'm going to maybe do a broadcast tomorrow or Friday. I might be staying in a Buddhist monastery uh, Thursday night. I might be staying there, and I might do an early broadcast on uh, Friday morning. I'm not sure, but in the next couple of days, I'll definitely be uh, out there. Thanks so much. For, when I was a kid in Philadelphia... Yeah, right. Yeah, the negative kind of had a negative connotation, right? Yeah, that's that was my impression of it too. So, all right, guys, thanks so much for coming in. Great to see everybody again. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. I'll be uh, broadcasting for sure in the next couple of days. So, take care, Matthew, Cheryl, Bruce Lee, uh, Mash Code. Okay, cool. Paula, Ariel, Allen's California boy, thanks for hosting. Ariel, thanks for hosting. Uh, Lido, if you're still in here. Pete, thanks for coming in. Benny, uh, Arctic Cat, and everyone else who's in here. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.